Chemical engineering is so tough. Is it even possible to get through this degree and have a life? Well, joining us today is an amazing woman who's working on her chemical engineering PhD at Yale, and she's gonna share her experiences with us and tell us exactly how hard chemical engineering really is. By the way, if you think chemical engineers are cool, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you don't wanna miss out on all our new STEM content, hit subscribe. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk to our guest speaker. Hi there, I'm so, so excited to have you here. So why don't you go ahead and kick us off with a little introduction. Hi guys, my name is Fernanda. I was born and raised in El Salvador and I moved to the US, to Connecticut, when I was 19 years old. I started my academic career at a community college and I graduated with my associates in engineering science. Then I transferred to a four-year college and received my bachelor's in chemical engineering and now I'm working on my PhD also in chemical engineering at Yale University. Okay, first of all, congrats on taking your skills to such a prestigious university. I can't wait to see all that you'll accomplish while at Yale. And I love that you mentioned that you started off by going to a community college. Just because I feel that so many people fear going to community colleges at first because of how it may look when they're applying to those big name schools. But I feel like you're a great example of what you can achieve by going to a community college at first. All right, so I'm super curious. Tell us about the coolest day you've had so far as a chemical engineer. The coolest day that I had. Um, well, as a student, I had a lot of cool days, I believe. Especially in my laboratory classes, we did so many projects that I thought they were super cool and fun. But maybe if I had to pick one, um, one of the projects that we did was testing reactors. But, um, so the, the idea, it's what it's mind blowing for me. So reactors are usually like super big, like huge. And like, just think about it. Like you want to create something and you want to test it before you actually spend a lot of money, right? It creating it because it costs a lot of money. Um, so it was really fun to learn how to test these reactors before you go ahead and, and make them. So one of the ways to start is that you design the micro reactor and then you 3D print it and then you test it and you can design different ones and 3D print them because that's cheap, right? And then obviously like when you find something that works for you, then you it has to go through a process where you scale it and um, obviously there's more testing but just like doing that in the lab and like seeing that you can create something so small and you can test it and like you know design it and 3d print it and then test it in the lab for me it was super cool because that's engineering at its finest. That does sound really awesome. I also believe that seeing a product come to life and working on it through all its different phases is extremely rewarding. And they actually turn out to be my favorite projects too when I get to work on the entire product life cycle. Uh, so now I feel like although we're both engineers, we do very different things. So at a very basic level, what do chemical engineers do and what kind of industries can they work in? Chemical engineers can develop and design chemical manufacturing processes. We use the fundamentals of chemistry, physics, biology, and math for the manufacturing of chemicals, food, drugs, fuel, and so many other products. We go from, we take the raw material and we manufacture it to, do, to create another product. We can work in different industries that include manufacturing, um, chemical industry, energy industry, beauty industry, pharmaceuticals, electronics, polymers, uh, business, biotechnology. Oof, there's so many industries, environmental health and safety, so many. Thank you for giving us that very clear explanation. All right, what kind of roles can chemical engineers take on? We can have many different roles. You can work obviously as a chemical engineer, but also you can work as a quality engineer, energy engineer, nuclear engineer, petroleum engineer, environmental health and safety engineer, um, food scientist, biotechnologist, um, plant operator, 
and so many more. Okay, gotcha. So for this next question, I know you're unique and that you've ventured into learning new skills that are not typical for a chemical engineering curriculum. So can you talk to us a little bit about these skills and are there any that you recommend for students? Um, it's not very common to see that a chemical engineer like combines and likes programming, but I did that, like I really like programming. While I was in engineering school, I took, uh, we, we all take a programming class. So um, now people are learning Python, but when I took that class, I learned uh, C++. And then um, throughout like engineering school, while I was taking other classes, I use MATLAB a lot. And I think that a lot of engineers use that program. So like whenever we had a, a homework and we had to do like a complicated uh, math equation, we'd use MATLAB. And I really liked doing that. So after I graduated with my bachelor's, I did a data science bootcamp where I learned data science, obviously, and also I learned um, Python and R. And I really like Python and like the whole data science thing. Um, so now that I'm doing my PhD, I'm hoping to combine chemical engineering and data science. Um, and like right now, I'm going to start doing my rotation. So I don't know exactly like what my topic it's going to be for my PhD. But one of my rotations is with an advisor that he does a lot of programming. So it was at the end like really helpful. Another skill that I did throughout like my undergrad was my research skill skills. I did REUs, which are research experience for undergraduates. And I really, really recommend people to do a REUs or at least one so you can explore if you want to do research. Because if at the end you do it and you didn't like it, you don't like research at all, it is still a good outcome because now you're sure that you want to go into industry and you don't want to do research or PhD. So, but it, when I did my first REU, which was at Princeton University, I really liked it. And that's how I started like developing my, my researching skills. Then in my undergrad university, I did research there as well. And then I did another REU where I went to the Czech Republic. And in that REU, actually I did a lot of computational work. So I was super excited about that. So yes, that's um, doing like summer research programs are great opportunities and that really helped me getting into graduate school. That is so helpful. If you're a student and you're watching this video, I hope you're taking notes. All right, now let's talk about Yale because I'm so excited for you. So what are you looking forward to most now that you're starting your chemical engineering PhD there? I am super excited about doing research because I know it's not going to be like my undergraduate research experience, which was great, but in there it's like most of the time the professors or the graduate students, they tell you what to do and they choose the projects for you. Now I'm going to decide my project. Obviously my PI has to accept, but <laughs> I'm very excited because I'm going to be working something that I like. And I'm excited to take the classes, the graduate classes, because I'm gonna learn more about chemical engineering and that's always fun. And I'm also excited about meeting like-minded people. And finally, and I think this is what excites me the most, it's about being a TA and like helping teach because this is my main reason why I'm getting my PhD. It's because I wanna be a professor and help students. I really, really liked it. Um, I worked as a math tutor before and I just love it. So I'm super excited about that. I think being a professor sounds like such a gratifying job. And honestly, I can totally see you being one just because every time you have to explain something to someone, you're so concise and you get your point across really well. Okay, so I'm really interested to know how being a female and a minority in a male dominated field has helped you thrive and what are some mechanisms that you use to help you? So I'm really like the non-traditional student because 
to start, I'm a Latina and I'm an immigrant. As I said, I came to the US when I was 19 years old and I had to learn English. So also English is my second language. And I'm a woman in engineering that like, I'm a minority in every aspect of my life. Um, but yeah, like being different, it actually has helped me because first I have learned how to use this into as an advantage and I found a lot of opportunities like scholarships and fellowships and people always want to help minorities in STEM so like that I like I have taken advantage of that fact and also since in my class literally there was only two Latinas in my class so I look around and nobody looks like me and I wanted to find people that look like me and I started finding these people on social media actually um, on Instagram so and and I really really like that and I was inspired because some of these women in STEM were sharing their journey so that's how I got inspired to share my journey on Instagram and that's what I do I, I create content about STEM and college tips and I try to help the people that are going through uh, the same things that I go through or that I went through because I know at that moment I was looking for someone like me and I didn't really see that so it really helped me be the person that I am today and I really liked it you know, that's such a good point you make. It's actually very common for minorities to leave their jobs because they feel they don't fit in. But if we work on increasing the number of minorities in STEM, we can change this. And I feel like you're working towards that through your social media. Okay, now it's time for the big question. Fernanda, you've graduated with your chemical engineering bachelor's and now you're taking this even a step further. So I must ask you, is chemical engineering hard? <laughs> I get this question a lot. I've noticed that a lot of people think that either electrical engineering or chemical engineering are the hardest engineering. And I even looked that up. And yes, apparently electrical and chemical are the hardest engineering, according to what I saw in the website. But honestly, I cannot compare it to another engineer because this is the only engineering I did. So. Um, it is hard because you have to study a lot in engineering school. You know, you're going in a fast pace and you have to learn a lot of topics. But it's definitely manageable if you really want to do it. And I mean, I had fun, honestly. And I had a baby on my junior year of college. I had to work full time for some semesters and I still got good grades. So yes, you can do it. <laughs> Thank you for being so honest and real with us. Okay, now you all heard her. If you're considering a chemical engineering degree, you can do it. It just takes dedication and hard work. But as you heard Fernanda, you can still have fun while in college. Also, Fernanda, you're a super mom and a super student. So we are so honored to have been able to interview you here on the Steminist Network. Thank you so much for all the useful information you've given our viewers and for spending some time with us. I want to wish you the best of luck on your new journey at Yale. Question for our viewers. Are you considering a chemical engineering degree? If so, why do you want to get this degree? Drop it in the comments below. Now, if you're curious about which type of engineer makes the most money, check out our video right here on the Steminist Network. Thank you so much for joining us today. Catch you next time.